Welcome in this video in which we will have a brief overview of all the plugins you can have in the Isagraph 6 Workbench. So I'm going to open the first plugin which is the Solution Explorer, uh, in, in which I, I can see uh, my project in a tree view, a kind of tree view. I'm going to open the deployment view, which is which is the hardware architecture view of my project. In my project, I have a device and a resource, and in the program section of this resource, I can create programs with all the language available. So it means the 61131 languages and the 61499 language. I have a dictionary to create the variable that I need. So I have created two variables. I have also a local library where I will be able to create my function, my function blocks, and my data type. I can create in my resource an isaview page. Isaview is a small HMI embedded in the workbench. So if I go back in my deployment view and if I double click on my device, I will open the device view. In the device view, I will find mostly the same information that in the Solution Explorer. For example, in the program section, I can see all the programs I have created in the Solution Explorer. If I go in the function block section, I will see a function block created in the Solution Explorer. In the device view, I can create my input and my output. It's a graphical view, but I can see in the local dictionary that these variables are also created. If I do the creation of one input in the local dictionary, I see in my device view that this input is automatically created also. Let's open now another plugin which is the navigation window. In the navigation window, I can also have some elements concerning my device in my resource. For example, here's a list of the C function and C function blocks supported. Here's a list of the IO boards. Here's a, some characteristics of my targets and so on. So it's, it's again another way to have um, to display information concerning the device and the resource. So I close all this now and I'm going to open one program. So if I double click on the ST program, I will open the ST editor and I will display the toolbar, which is another plugin, which will give me all the elements that can be inserted in my programs. So each time I open a different program, I see that the, my toolbox change with the elements corresponding to this program. So this is my graphical page, eyes of view, where I can insert some elements also. This is my block selector. So when I insert a block, I have the list of all the blocks supported by my target. I can also go in the block library and see all the blocks and operators of the 61131 and for coming from the library, local library or remote library available for this target. If I open the property window, I will be able to set some property corresponding to each element of my project. It can be a function, a function block, a variable, a resource, a device, and so on. So for example, if I select this function block, I see that I can, I can customize the colors of my function block. Okay, so I open another program. I see that I can display it in a full screen mode with the full screen functionality, and I can also display the document overview. The document overview gives me on one side uh, the view of my whole program and on the other side just a view on a specific part of this program. Let's open now the binding editor. The bindings, it's it, uh, what we call binding is the exchange of variables between uh, several resources. In this case, I exchange three variables between these two resources. For this, I have created producer and consumer groups. Um, this is the IO wiring editor. So in this resource, I can insert 
the IO boards defined in the target definition and I can connect my variable to the channel of my boards. I can here also export or import my variables. So I will export my variables in an Excel file. And if I open this Excel file, I see all the information concerning my variables. The same way, I can also import back an Excel file to create the variable in my dictionary. I can uh, import and export all the elements of my project. It can be a program, it can be the resource, it can be a device, or it can be the whole project. So let's try to export a resource. So I select to export an exchange file. I click on export, I select a path. OK, when the export is finished, I can import back my exchange file. So I'm going to browse to my folder, select my resource, and I import. So another resource is automatically created in my device, and the name of this resource is resource1 one, copy1, one, because the resource1 one is already existing in my device. Um, let's see now the cross-reference browser. So if I open a ST program and if I select cross-reference browser, I will calculate all the cross-reference on my variables. So I see, for example, here my variable selected. I can see where this variable is used, what it's written, or what it's read. The same way I can show the dependency tree. It means on which variable this variable selected has some effect, and what are the variables which have an effect on my variable selected. So if I go in my ST code, I can see that my variable selected has effect and depends on some other variables. We can have a look now to the document generator. So I can choose to print a part of this project or the globality of my project into a Word document. So for example, here I have printed my ST program into a Word document. I can close this. Let's have a look now to the customization tools. So I'm going to select the customize command. Here I can see that I have the possibility to create my own toolbars and to customize, to customize my toolbars by adding some commands and so on. In the option window, I can select um, all the options concerning my project, concerning my language, concerning the dictionary, concerning a lot of things where I can change, set the default colors, uh, display the grid or not, select for eyes of view, which are the default animation for each kind of shape and so on. Of course, all of these settings can be exported and imported on another computer to have exactly the same uh, settings for the workbench. So here you can select to export, to reset, or to import settings. Uh, let's have a look to the start page. In the start page, you can create new project, or you can see the recent project, and you have also the possibility to see some videos. OK, I can close all this. In the About page, you can see uh, the version of your workbench and also the version of all the components, all the plugins installed in the workbench. In the description window, I can enter some information concerning, in this case, the resource, because I have selected my resource. OK. Um, when I compile a project, a program, or a resource, all the information for example, the, the compilation will be displayed in the output windows. If I have errors, another plugin, which is the error list, appears. So in this window, I can check uh, why, for example, my, my compilation uh, is not su successful. So I'm going to, to correct my error. I close this, and I can compile again 
my solution. So this time it will be successfully compiled. Okay, and when it's compiled, I can debug or I can simulate my project. So in this case, I'm going to simulate. So I start my simulation. Okay, I can see here in a FBD program, for example, if I double click on this variable, I can change the value or I can lock or unlock this variable. So I can also display this variable in a spy list. A spy list is a list of variables selected. I, want, I can only see these uh, variables. Uh, another plugin is a locked variable viewer. So in this case, I can see all the variables which are locked. And another one is a controller status where I can see the status of my controller, the sql time, the number of locked variables, and so on. I'm going to create now a new project based on a failover template in order to show you how to configure a failover system. Okay, so you see first that my uh, device icon is quite uh, different because I, I see two different PLCs. In the device view, I can select the failover plugin where I can configure the IP addresses of my primary and my secondary systems and also configure some timeouts and uh, display some system variables concerning the failover. I create now another project based on another template and I can see in my resource a new section which is interrupt in which I can create some programs. So these programs will not be executed in the cycle but will be executed only when an interrupt appears. So I have to make the link between my programs in the interrupt section and my interrupt. So in this interrupt configurator I can select for each kind of interrupt defined in my target definition the program which is corresponding. So here I see that if I uh, remove an interrupt for one, one program. This program is going back automatically in the cyclic section. This video is now finished. If you want to contact us, you can write us at support at isagraph.com or super at isagraph.com.